Welcome to the Kerner office. Today, I had Shannon back. Shannon was on our July 19th and July 12th episodes, and he was so good that people begged for him to come back. So here he is. Shannon's a lot like me. He started a zillion businesses. He flips high ticket items, handbags, watches, cars, trucks worth of iPhones, you name it. He started a lot of stuff and he has a ton of experience. So I wanted you guys to learn from him some more. So today, Shannon and I spoke about a bunch of cool business ideas from digital detox centers for kids and adults to kind of like a ghost kitchen concept, but not a ghost kitchen. You'll really like that one. And then we talked about integrating AI in boomer owned businesses and charging a pretty penny for that. So enjoy this episode with Shannon. And to next week, a week from today, we will have another episode with Shannon. So come back and listen to that one as well. See you later. I tell you another thing that is happening, at least in California, I don't know about in, in Texas, but public school districts around here are just starting to ban smartphones at school. Mm -hmm. They finally are like, hey, this is crazy. So I yep. really think there's an interesting opportunity in a digital detox retreat, whether it's yep. virtual or you know they go for a weekend and all these learn ways to manage, especially teenagers and kids learning how to manage these devices. Because- you know, mm -hmm. a lot of parents, they just hand it, here you go. All the things that you need on there, like the safety stuff and parental notifications and all those kinds of things. I think it's a, a really interesting opportunity. And I think the timeliness is hot. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, coming up with ways the to do it, is, you know, is swinging back swinging the other way. So let's teach yeah. these kids how to use this amazing tool, how to protect themselves, what the do's and don'ts are, when to use it, how to do it. It's a tool. 2007 when the iPhone first came out. So, you know, over a decade of time, 17 years about, but there's a whole, like my kids were a little older. So I was so lucky or fortunate that they were already in high school by the time that they started getting to, uh, smartphones. But now I was just on a trip with some family and, you know, one of my wife's nephews is like eight years old and he's got an iPhone 12 and just doing his thing, you know, and so there's, I, I think that's an interesting opportunity, very easy to get into. You can yeah. use ChatGPT to create you a whole course, a whole yep. set of curriculum, and then you go through it all, learn it. One of the ways I think it's to get started too is to do things for free, is to offer your services for free. And I think you could do that with that the digital detox. It's like, hey, I, you know, our school is going off. I'm, I created a digital detox course here, take it no charge. Let me know your feedback. And I'm going to do a little webinar this weekend, or I'm going to be down at the park and I'm going to talk through all these things and see how it goes. They will tell you what works and what does not, right? They'll teach you. That's how you can get started. My brain is flooding with ideas right now. All right. I'm going to sit up <laughs> in, the, in my chair. So I love this idea. It's very relevant because I have four kids. My oldest yep. is 14. He just got his first phone and we are very much in the camp of like, if you make it taboo, then they're just going to want to do bad things. I agree with you on that. Yep. And so it was like, you have an iPhone at 14, it's locked down, but you still have access to certain things. At a certain age, maybe 17, he'll get Instagram. Like he has no social media because if he never uses social media while he's in our house, then who knows what he'll do when he leaves, right? And so I don't want to get on a soapbox about all that, but no, I think right, it's right. very interesting because they have digital detox stuff for millennials. That's been around yeah. for five years, yes. right? Where it's like, yep. Yep. you pay $10,000 or something right. crazy. You go in the woods with no phone and like you meditate in a cave for yeah. a week. Cold turkey. Right? Or yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. And then they have summer camps for kids. And a lot of those summer camps don't allow phones and they're out in the woods and kids have a fun time. They do great. But I don't know of anyone doing this where it's like, it could be a day thing. It could be a week thing, like a summer camp, but it's not framed as a summer camp. It's framed as a digital detox camp, right? Yep. And I'm picturing it like, you've seen the show Scared Straight? Yeah. <laughs> you ever seen that? <laughs> yeah, it's oh, like, yeah, I love that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably take different angles at the same camp where it's like, on one hand, it's like a softer angle and it's like, here's the science behind it, let's be responsible. And on the other hand, it's like a Scared Straight where it's like, watch this video of these kids that all lost their best friends in car accidents. Invite these kids that have went about it the, the wrong way or, and then invite these parents. Cause you'd have multiple sessions. You'd have the kids session, but you have to have a parent session as well. And you, then yep. you have parents that come up and say, yeah, you know, I didn't under, I just handed my kid the phone and, and this, cause I would hazard to guess that most parents that are very busy 
and uh, they're not paying attention to what's going on. And the kids figure yeah. it out, man. They get these apps to hide them someplace and they go around mm -hmm. and all, this, all these kids want to be on social media, but they don't understand the guardrails that need to be in place. And you have to teach it in a way that respects their intellect. But you can't talk down to them. They're smart young kids. Hey, look, we're going to, I'm going to teach you how these things you can do with it as you will, but let me show you the, the repercussions. And this is what you want to save. You know, you want to protect yourself and all that stuff. So I love that concept. I do think it's very timely right now for kids. I talk to my kids about this when we're driving. It's like, here's how a cookie works or an, an algorithm works. If Instagram sees you click on this cute girl, then you refresh the screen. It's going to show you 10 of those. If it sees you click on a guy fishing, it's going to show you 10 of those. Like it doesn't care what you look like or what you look at. It just wants you to stay in the app forever. Yes. Right? So just yes. know what's happening behind the scenes. Like something yeah. like that would be so valuable, right? Very, very. Um, and people complain like, oh, my the X is just a cesspool. My feed is full of stuff. And it's like, well, yep. let me show you how to fix that. You know, here, <laughs> I don't want to see for. this. I don't want to see this post. This post is not relevant. And it takes only yeah. a few hours. And all of a sudden, oh, wow, I'm seeing really valuable you know, content in my feed. It, so these kids don't understand it. And it's like, okay. And how do you manage what's a reasonable amount of time that you can spend on it? And this kind all those kinds of things. I think it's a, I think parents would spend a thousand bucks like that to have a four hour course down at the park. <laughs> I think it's a home run big time. And then the kid comes home with like a, basically like a plan of action or a roadmap for the next five years of their life. Right. Like yeah. we recommend that at age this, they get Instagram at age X, they get exactly. Snapchat or and it's like, well, I don't want them to ever have Snapchat. And it's like, he's going to get it at 18. They're going to get it. Right? Yeah, so, they're going to. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's the same thing, that mentality. When your kids go away to college, they're going to experience stuff that you probably yep. don't want them to. So you got to start loosening the reins because I would yeah. rather have them experiencing some of those things while they're in high school, still living in my house. So I could walk yeah. them through that and help them and be a resource for them. So, but I love that. The other thing I really like is this, we see this more and more out here in California where you have people that want to start a restaurant, which I think is a horrific, I don't know anything about it, but it sounds like a horrific business. But the concept that I do like is, and I have my neighbor owns a, a couple of these, is licensing the name and the recipes of another restaurant, having a very small, almost like a ghost kitchen. We just had one in our, my town. They took over a small, it used to be, I think, a I don't know, a cheesesteak shop or something like that. But now when you go mm -hmm. there, there's all these restaurant logos on the window and you walk in mm. and there's just a flat screen menu and you say, what restaurant do you want to order from? And you go, okay, I want this fried chicken place and I want their sandwich. Great. Or I want this vegetarian, boom, boom, boom. And the kitchen's right there and they have all the ingredients and the recipes from these local restaurants that are well known they pay a licensing fee to them so it's additional revenue for the the bigger restaurant but your family can go to this place and order five different things you can order it online go and pick it up there, there's no well there's maybe there was a couple little tables but i love this concept because it's borrowed credibility which i'm, I'm talking on the business brain podcast on friday i'm, I'm talking about this concept of borrowed credibility you instantly have an audience that's searching for these restaurants. They've been around for a long mm -hmm. time. Maybe it's a national chain. I don't know if it's a national chain, if they would license or not, but certainly regional. And you get this like, look, all we want to sell is five of your best items or whatever it is. And we'll pay you X, yep. X dollars per month. And then you have your ingredients that you can share because ingredients are, are the killer in those businesses, right? Things that go bad or, you know, stale yep. or vegetables that, that don't last. So you've spread your risk across 10 different restaurants that you are selling mm -hmm. this stuff for. I love it. And the one that we have here locally to us is awesome. You go in, it's like a big flat screen. It's like, I don't know, 20 inch vertical thing. And it's like really nice, nicely done. And the, you can pick and pick. And like, What's it I called? Cheat. Uh, it's called Local Kitchen. This is ours is. Sorry, but there's a bunch going. of them. Yeah, local kitchen. If I want a cheese, a double cheeseburger and French fries, but my wife wants grilled asparagus, and so, oh, great, and allows you to do it and pick it up on the way home, or can order it online. And of course, they do a massive DoorDash business, right? That are people are coming in, and it's cool. I think it's an interesting concept. It's, it's different. It's like a ghost kitchen that you go to. It is, yeah. It's also kind of like a food hall, but you just order everything 
from one, like at a food hall, you walk around, I, that one has a shorter line. That one has a longer line. I, I really want chicken, but the line's too long. So I'll go over here. So it's not a food hall. It's not a ghost kitchen. It's kind of in between. Yeah. It's most similar almost to gold belly. You familiar with them? No. What is that? Goldbelly.com is a website where you can order like the most famous, iconic restaurant food in the world. Oh, that's cool. Like yeah. ma mail order to your, so I like, see. you know, ribs from Alabama, dish pizza from Giordano's. It is like that. And yeah. it's, it's very expensive because you're sure shipping this stuff. Like yeah. a brisket is like $200 from yeah, Franklin's, right. right? Yeah. But Goldbelly is like a $150 million company. They do great. I learned about this on the flip side. Because my neighbor who owns like three food trucks and a couple of standalone restaurants, and he licensed their best selling things to this local kitchen. And he's like, yeah, it's great because it generates revenue for us that we wouldn't otherwise have. It's probably the best ROI they have, right? Do you know what he pays? I don't. Or do you know what he gets? No. I don't know what he gets. Interesting. No. Yeah, I can find out. You know, I'm sure every deal is negotiated differently, but I can't imagine it. It's got to work. Obviously, there's... Uh, you know, like I said, the restaurants kind of rotate. I do notice that where you'll go over there and it's like, oh man, they don't have this anymore. And I don't know if they do that yeah. intentionally to keep it fresh or, you know, they've negotiate, they do a six month trial and something changes with a certain restaurant. But that's what I would do because the cost structure I think is much better. There's only like three or four people in the whole, in this place. And that yet they make, you know, a hundred different, you know, 10 restaurants, their top 10 items and then you know, okay, great. And then the guy goes and does all that stuff. It's pretty, it's fascinating. They pick these meals they want based on ingredients. So like mm -hmm. we want to have to fit a profile. Yeah. It's a certain profile that says, this is how I would do it. I don't know if they do it. I'm speculating, but <laughs> yeah, we want to do chicken, but we have, this is the amount. This is how we want to do it. We don't want to do this with the chicken because we can do these five other things with it or something, some produce or that kind of stuff. It's cool. Yeah. All right. If you are watching this clip right now, you are watching this on YouTube. And if you are a fan of podcasts, please check out my podcast while you're at it, because sometimes I have podcasts that aren't on YouTube and sometimes I have YouTubes that aren't on podcasts. So check out the Kerner office on any podcast platform, or you can go to tkopod.com. Also, my newsletter, we'll throw that in there. There are no ads. It's weekly. It's different content than my podcast and YouTube newsletter.chrisjkerner.com. You'll see the link and we'll see you there. Are you familiar with Jack Welch's management style? Have you heard about that at all? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. So he basically, at GE, like in the 80s and 90s, when they had their heyday, Jack Welch was the CEO. Their policy, every year, they would fire the bottom 10% oh, yeah, yeah. of all I'm employees. familiar with that. Yep. Based on a performance review, no yep. matter what. And then they would promote the top 20% and then the 70% in between just stayed. I feel like that's what Costco does with their products. It's where you always see new products at Costco because it's like, ah, didn't make the cut, you're out. I wonder if this restaurant does that. And if they don't, they should, where it's like, listen, buddy, we got to see 10 grand out of you every month or you're out. There's no no reason. Yeah, there's no reason to do and it. And then like the top 10%, it's like, we're going to move you to the top of the menu because people yeah, clearly are looking the for you. first thing. Yep. And, and just think about all that borrowed credibility you get when they search for, oh, I, this place mm -hmm. is like, we have a place here called The Hangout that has unbelievable fried chicken. Well, you're searching for that place. And in addition to the results for their restaurant, Ghost Kitchen Place comes up there too. Local kitchens. We offer, you know, The Hangout fried chicken. You know, it's like, oh, well, what do I want to do? Go eat at the restaurant or just go walk in and like take out that kind of counter, if you will. It's kind of cool. Do they offer brands that like don't have a, a presence or a name or is it only stuff that you would have known, heard of? Locally that you would know but not nationally. It's all typically okay. local or regional, I would say, restaurants. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of ghost kitchens just have a Kelsey's yeah. Pizza, like just some generic name that's not actually a local brand. So it doesn't do like Applebee's, but it also doesn't have generic names. It's like locally known foods. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much locally stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A regional. Interesting. It's, it's cool. Yeah. I think people sleep on this because... Online, there's a lot of oh, the AI is crazy or whatever, but I think the opportunity to help SM, small and medium business owners with AI is unbelievable. I think that if you're a people person and you're comfortable reaching out to just start in your area, if you walk into these businesses and say, hey, you know what? And I would do it something for free at first to get their attention. It's like, how do you learn about AI? Just 
go to the AI and have it teach you. Go to chatgpt.com, mm-hmm. get a paid account and just say, well, how do I use you? What are the prompts? It'll tell you. <laughs> It'll tell you how to do it. And yeah. But something I love is lots of these sites have op- tremendous opportunity for these local businesses to integrate AI into their systems, whether it's creating a chat version of all their policies or their knowledge base or their FAQs. That's just low, very low hanging fruit. You could do that instantly within minutes and you could give it to them for free to get their attention on and on. Just keep talking about it, that all the ways that they could do it and the data that can be analyzed if you can do it. I think, I can't remember if we talked about this last show, but I had a, a client that they just wanted to find more customers that fit this profile. And I just took those customers and uploaded them to the AI and said, find me 50 companies that meet these same profile, but tell me what the profiles are first and then do it. So if you could show that to, it's like, Hey, if you give me some data, like if you only, if you're a service provider, I don't know, residential, and you only want, where's your sweet spot, people's homes that are over $2 million, you can just automate that with the AI so easy and we always talk about boring businesses or the silver tsunami, all these older people that own businesses. Mm-hmm. Integrating this stuff certainly makes their business more valuable and the systems that you have. So when you're ready to sell, you can go, oh yeah, look, we've got these AI systems built in that are generating these reports, automating these systems, created this, created that. I think it's a huge opportunity, man. Huge. Yeah. I want to play on, take one thing you said and add to that. And that was take their FAQs and give it to them for free, right? Like run it through AI, do it for free. I think you could also, let's say you only attack businesses that are listed on Google My Business profile that have over a hundred reviews. There are, there's already software out there where you could export all those reviews, just a couple clicks for a dollar into a Google a spreadsheet, like we were just talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And you could say, you could automate all of this where you upload a list of businesses in Modesto, California that have over a hundred reviews. You don't care about the industry. Yeah. Upload it to ChatGPT and say, I want you to give me the top five things that each business can do to improve their business and make it more profitable solely based on the reviews. Yeah. Okay? That's huge. Dude. Then you take the output of that. When you scrape these, you're scraping their emails and their phone numbers as well. You cold email it to them and say, Hey, and you're very transparent about the AI upfront. Like I used AI to do this. You're not trying to withhold anything. Cause I was just talking about this on another podcast. So I don't want to be too repetitive, but it's like AI will always need someone to click the button, right? I don't care how much it automates. There's gotta be an operator. So your competitive advantage is the AI. Like I used AI to do this and I can use AI to implement these five suggestions. Yeah. Number two might be garbage. I agree. It does need some fine tuning, but I can help you. And that yes. at least gets you gets them on the phone when yeah, you close absolutely. them with. It's going to be tw- twenty five hundred bucks a month. Yep, whatever. One year contract. Yep. They see that you have credibility already. Credibility is gi- giving them this. Up- hey, look, here's this information. You know, give it away. Show them value first, because they get called all day long by people that want their money before they give them any value. Hey, if you pay me, I can get you X. But you're coming back and saying, Hey, look, you don't have to pay me. I'm giving you Y. If you want. X, I'm here to help. And then I'll explain it to you and this kind of thing. It's just a different approach. I just think it's local, non-scalable. Don't think about scaling right now. Just go local. And maybe you can only charge, who knows if you could charge 2,500 bucks. Maybe these smaller companies could only pay you 500 bucks. But mm-hmm. you just have some different la- layers of things that you could do so they can ease their way into it. Say, look, it's $500 and I can produce this, this, and this. And if you want to subscribe after that, it's, you know, whatever per month, it's a huge opportunity, dude. Huge. I agree. We're back to the pricing. I was like, how do you first charge 2,500 a month? Cause that's a big ask. That's a lot of money. And he's like, for what I was offering, he was doing like SEO or something or Facebook ads. He's like, basically for the same level of service I was offering, other companies were charging 900 a month. And I went in there and said, I'll do it for 150. And it took me 20 hours to do that. So I was making like seven bucks an hour. But then the next person, I said 250. The next person, yep. I said 350. And really, I just started gumming up <laughs> until right. I had my first. And he didn't get a no for like 12 people. Is that and finally, right? he's like, That's it's a thousand bucks a month. We're like, ah, uh, I don't know. It's like, all right, 900. It's like, okay. And yeah. like, that was his pricing strategy, right? That's it. It's a you, test. So you could do you that same it. strategy with anything. 
Yeah. yeah. Or absolutely. free. Like I'm not against free too. Like to get yep. your to get your first testimonial. I yeah. think that's also yeah. smart. Oh yeah, because like for me, this concept of borrowed credibility, like I had no testimonials zero a few months ago. And that was one of the things like you really got to get some testimonials. So I just gave away free calls, you know, Hey, can we jump on a call? And then we'd talk. And if we hit it off good and I, and I felt like I had added value, I just ask them, say, Hey, if I sit, can I send you a link? If you felt I added value, would you leave me a testimonial for the call? And boom, 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 boom. And so you, you build that up because you're giving first, giving first is huge. One of the last things I'll leave you with that I really like that I've noticed more and more and more. There's a lot of energy that people that want to be entrepreneurs, they don't have the nuts and bolts stuff that we've generated over decades where you learn how to file this paperwork and you get this resale permit, you get this business license and you get your, your employee identification number and you do all these. If you're like a detailed oriented person and maybe you're not the swashbuckling pirate sales guys, you know, that want to come talk on a podcast, but you're super detailed, this business in a box that you could offer an entrepreneur, I think is a great confidence builder for them where you just had all this stuff here. This is what you need and you either create it and they can follow the steps. But I would argue that a lot of these folks that are, they're very smart, but you know how it is. You get up on this government website and you're like, I don't know how to answer that question. Am I cash mm -hmm. or am I cruel? I don't even know what that is. What is this and why do I need to do it this way? Am I a sole proprietor? Am I a LLC? I just see it more and more is that people that are very intelligent and are taking action on pushing them, go, go, go. But there's, they get tripped up with the small stuff. Yeah. So if you're like an yeah. accountant background, let's say your bookkeeper or just a detail oriented person, you could create, and you could use AI to help you if you wanted, but you could create this whole package, this business in a box. It's like, look, I'm going to drop this right in your lap and walk you through these things so you can focus on the stuff that you're excited about, whether it's mm -hmm. you know, Etsy or digital detox or I'm building a restaurant or you're going to start a, you know, whatever. This is going to be all with you all the way along and I'll have all these instructions for you and we'll meet whatever once a month and go over it with you or I'll give you access to me in Slack and I'll answer questions. I think that's a, a really big opportunity. I agree. I'm going to try to level it up. By the way, that's what I'm not pivoting, but I've been going in that direction on this podcast where we'll start with a, a business idea. Maybe it's like, maybe we're saying up front, this is a stupid idea. I know it yeah. is. Don't judge me. Here it is. And then you say, <laughs> all right, well, what if you did this? And then I said, okay, I like that. It's like a yes. And to yeah, a business idea. Of course. It's like, yes. but I'll do this. And then by the time you're done with it, it's like, we have an amazing idea. Yes, it. absolutely. Right. And yeah. it's all like, like yeah. there's no prep work. It's improv. Yeah. And yep. it's like, that's, what's beautiful about it is that it all happens in real time. I love that idea. And I, I think it's very approachable for other people that see it happen. This is how it happens, dude. So I like that idea. And I particularly like framework of sell to one to sell to 10. So it's like yep. people say in software, it's like build once sell a million times, but well, that's why software is cool. This is like sell to one to sell to a hundred. And so instead of selling to a entrepreneur, and I don't use that as a pejorative, I yep. use it as a fact, someone that wants to be an entrepreneur, you can sell it to him or you can sell it. And this was your idea to a CPA or a bookkeeper or an accountant. And you could say, Hey, you've got 136 clients, varying levels of success. One guy might own a $50 million lumber yard. One guy might have a $50,000 barbershop, right? Yep. And so yep. you use your best judgment, but how easy of an upsell is this Shannon, where every February, you mass email all these CPAs or tax prep guys and you say, Hey, you're about to send a bunch of invoices. You're about to make 80% of your revenue. I have this business in a box that is customized for insert state name here, you got Texas, it. Yep. Illinois, you whatever. You can even do industries. Insert city name and insert industry here. And you're using chat GPT to go look at all of the headaches that people have on the, like the Texas website to file an LLC is I swear it's from 1988, like before the internet was invented somehow. I'm telling you, this website was launched before the internet somehow. I, know, I don't know how I they know. did it. Yeah, yeah. And so it's crazy. it takes all those nuances and it could be like like an outline, a title page, and it could be like 10,000 words, right? Yeah, you could have some um, loom, loom videos in there maybe that you walk through like, hey, yep. do this and do that. If you're this, if you do this, you do that. It, it could be an incredible curriculum that you created once 
you change some of the stuff up based on your state or whatever it is or the industry you're trying to get into. I think it's it I think there's definitely a need for it right there. So there's three things we talked about today. Not quite Go done. Ahead, you're not done. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. You, you, we got to price it. So yeah, you sell okay. it to them. And, and it's like, hey, you can mark this up as much as you want. I recommend that you just tack it on to their tax return bill. Say, hey, all right, it's going to be 380 bucks, but I have this business in a box thing. It's specifically for the plumbing industry here in Illinois. It's an extra hundred bucks. What do you think? So it's like, I'm going to sell it to you for $40 or 50 or 80 or whatever. You mark it up however you want, but I recommend that you attach it to the tax return because it's an afterthought. It's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, roll it in there. That'll really help. Yeah, what do you I, think? I love it. I, I think it's good. I think that at the same time you do that, then you, you also have it and you're pushing it out, you know, everywhere for that people to buy it yep. on their own. So you're basically white labeling to you exactly. know, these other accountants, book other administrative type people. Um, you've created it one time and and created some specialized parts of it. But yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's huge. Yeah. And, and, I'm excited uh, about that one. Yeah, I, I get excited about it too. I love talking about these things and that what I really enjoy with talking with you is boiling it down to making it accessible. It's like, yeah, I don't have, mm -hmm. you know, all this cash to go buy a restaurant, but we talked about a guy that bought an old cheesesteak shop and moved some stuff around, added a few things and came up with an a interesting idea to build kind of a quasi ghost kitchen for regional or the detox thing where you could do it in the park. The cost is minimal to build some curriculum. You could even include one of those, what is that, yonder sleeve that they lock those phones in. The parents get that sleeve. So when the kids go to bed at night, oh, just stays in the sleeve until the morning. You know, there's just all these upsells that you could do and and bifurcate into that and the business in a box. And then I, same thing is don't sleep on marketplaces. Etsy, eBay's the greatest AB product testing sell selling place in the mm -hmm. world. And uh, it's huge. It's huge. We, opportunity surrounds us. And if you keep that positive framework, and if you understand starting small is the way, it, it that is it. You're going to make mistakes and mistakes are tuition. You'll kill it, man. That's how you get started. And that excites me. I love helping other, people's get going, get other people get going. It's killer. I'm still hung up on this local kitchen idea. Like, <laughs> I feel like there's so many ways you could make money there. Like you you could reverse engineer what they do, right? You could go get the contract and yeah. you could get the whole system down. And cause like there's a million guys out there that want to start a restaurant. So That's you right. somehow get in their Facebook groups where it's like people yep. that own a food truck or people that want to start it. And then you start like whispering in their ears, like, all right, I know you want to start a barbecue restaurant, but for this price, I can sell you a template of starting a, it, we, you can't call it local kitchen. No. Starting a local kitchen yeah, where. Yeah. You basically go knock doors of some yep. local restaurants that have good reviews in your area. Let's say you get four and then your barbecue restaurant that no one's ever heard of is number five. That way, like you're taking 80% less risk for the, like you don't spend any more in kitchen materials or any of that. It's more complexity. It, it is more complexity. Yeah. And, and you're using their credibility. They've spent years and their reputation. They've spent years developing. So you obviously have to convince them that you can cook it, that you can make it, that you have a decent chef. And maybe you have to say, Hey, I'm, we're making this. Maybe you have to invite them over and say, Hey, can we cook you your top five dishes? So you could come taste them and work out a deal where you could, you know, it's a novel idea, but it takes action. That's the key yeah. to getting started action research. And it probably won't wind up the way you think it is, but that taking action and planning and getting that stuff going, that's the key. Yeah. I love that you said it's a novel idea because that just gave me a new framework. It's the best ideas are novel ideas in that are working well in a different market. Right. Because yep. like right. I don't like novel ideas in a vacuum. I don't want to start something new. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. But this is working in California. Yeah, you could do it anywhere, you know, and, and pop it up and start small and see if it works. Yeah. Find a a place that already has the kitchen and all that kind of stuff. Don't go spend you know, a hundred thousand dollars building it out or go borrow mm -hmm. somebody, borrow some time in a kitchen. I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about the restaurant business, but so it's awesome, man. Yeah. I love talking about this stuff. I, I could talk all day long. <laughs> yes, me too. Well, this was really <laughs> yeah. good. Where can we find you, Shannon? I appreciate your time again. Yeah, of course. So you can come follow me on X. It's just at my, at Shannon Jean, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-J-E-A-N. 
you can subscribe to my newsletter, my website, shannongene.com slash subscribe. I love doing this. Anytime you want to chat, man, it's great. And I love helping other people and I feel good about it. I feel like we're adding value. Agreed. Thank you. All right. Don't forget to come back in one week for the second half of this episode with Shannon. I'm sure you'll love it. Please like and subscribe. You know what to do.